Hey, welcome back. My name is Sushan Sutish and I am your trainer for this AZ104 Azure Administrator Associate course. In this video, we are entering into a new module in AZ104. The new module is called Network Traffic Management and we have many lessons within this module. The first lesson we are going to learn in this video is called Network Routing and Endpoints. Let's have a look at what are the things we are going to learn in this video. We will start with system routes and user defined routes and we will learn about few of the examples of routing. I will take you through how to create a routing table and how to create a custom route and then associate the route table. And when I'm explaining about these concepts, I will take you back to the Azure portal and show you so that you exactly know what I mean. And then we will talk about the service endpoint and the service endpoint services as well. And we will finish off with the private link. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Azure uses system routes to direct network traffic between virtual machines, on-premises network and the internet. The following situations are managed by these system routes. Traffic between VMs in the same subnet, between VMs in different subnets and same virtual network, and data flow from VMs to the internet. For example, consider this virtual network with two subnets. The communication between the subnet and from the front end to the internet are all managed by Azure using the default system routes. Please note that the information about the system route is recorded in the route table. A route table contains a set of rules called routes that specifies how packets should be routed in virtual network. And the route tables are associated to subnets and each packet leaving a subnet is handled based on the associated route table. And the packets are matched to route using the destination and the destination can be an IP address, a virtual network gateway, a virtual appliance or the internet. If a matching route can't be found then the packet is dropped. So what is user defined route? As explained in the previous topic, Azure automatically handles all network traffic routing. But what if you don't want to do something different? For example, you may have a virtual machine that performs a network function such as routing, firewalling, or WAN optimization. You may want certain subnet traffic to be directed to the virtual appliance. For example, you might place an appliance between subnets or subnet and the internet. In these situations, you can configure a user defined routes or UDR. UDRs control network traffic by defining route that specify the next hop of the traffic flow. This hop can be a virtual network gateway, virtual network, internet, or virtual appliance. Please note that each route table can be associated to multiple subnet, but a subnet can only be associated to a single route table. There are no additional charges for creating route tables in Microsoft Azure. So let's review a specific network routing example. In this example, you have a virtual network that includes three subnets. The subnets are private, DMZ, and public. In DMZ subnet, there is a network virtual appliance, and network virtual appliance are VMs that help with network functions like routing and firewall optimization. You want to ensure all traffic from public subnet goes through the network virtual appliance to the private subnet. So what are the steps you need to take? The first step is you need to create the route table. Then you will add a custom route that requires all private subnet traffic to be directed to the network appliance. And finally, you associate the new route to the public subnet. Please note that by default, 
using system route traffic would go directly to the private subnet. However, with a user defined route, you can force the traffic through the virtual appliance. Creating a route table is very straightforward. Uh, you must provide the name, subscription, the resource group location, and whether you want to use a virtual network gateway route propagation. A standard routing protocol is used to exchange routing and reachability information between two or more networks. Routes are automatically added to the route table for all subnets with virtual network gateway propagation enabled. In most scenarios, this is what if you want. For example, if you are using Express Route, you would want all subnet to have that routing information. So how do you create a custom route? So in this example, a new route is named to private subnet and the private subnet is at 10.0.1.0 and the route uses virtual appliance. Notice the other choice for the next hope type, which is network which is virtual network gateway, virtual network, internet, and none. And the virtual appliance is located at 10.0.2.4. In summary, this route applies to any address prefixes in 10.0.1.0 slash 24. And traffic headed to this address will be sent to the virtual appliance with a 10.0.2.4 address. And the last step in our example is to associate the public subnet with the new routing table. Each subnet can have zero or one route table associated with it. In this example, remember that virtual appliance should not have a public IP address and IP forwarding should be enabled on the device. All right, so let's understand what is service endpoints. A virtual network service endpoint provides the identity of your virtual network to the Azure service. Once service endpoints are enabled in your virtual network, you can secure Azure service resources to your virtual network by adding a virtual network rule to the resources. Today, Azure service traffic from a virtual network uses public IP addresses as source IP addresses. Once service endpoints are enabled in your virtual network, you can secure Azure service resources to your virtual network by adding a virtual network rule to the resources. Today, Azure service traffic from a virtual network uses public IP address as source IP address. With service endpoints, service traffic switches to use network with service endpoints Service traffic switches to use virtual network private address as source IP address when accessing this Azure service from virtual network. This switch allows you to access the services without the need for reserved public IP address used in IP firewalls. You might wonder why would you use service endpoints? Some of the benefits of using service endpoints are Improved security for your Azure service resources, optimal routing for Azure service traffic for your virtual network, and endpoints always take service traffic directly from your virtual network to the service on Microsoft Azure Backbone Network, and simple to set up with less management overhead. And please note that with service endpoint, the source IP address of the virtual machine in the subnet for the service traffic switches from using public IPv4 address to using private IPv4 addresses. Existing Azure service firewall rules using Azure public IP addresses will stop working with this switch. So please ensure Azure service firewall rules allow for this switch before setting up service endpoints. You may also experience temporary interruption to service traffic from this subnet while configuring service endpoints. And it's easy to add service endpoint to Azure Virtual Network. 
several services are available including Azure Active Directory, Azure Cosmos DB, Azure Cosmos DB, Event Hub, Key Vault, Service Bus, SQL and Storage. So what is Private Link? Azure Private Link provide private connectivity from virtual network to Azure Platform as a Service. Customer owned or Microsoft partner services. It simplifies the network architecture and secures the connection between endpoints in Azure by eliminating data exposure to the public internet. There are few benefits to private link. The first one is private connectivity to services on Azure, then integration with on premises and peer network, then protection against data exfiltration for Azure resources and services delivered directly to your customer's virtual network. So how it works? So use private link to bring services delivered on Azure into your private virtual network by mapping it to the private endpoint or privately deliver your own services in your customer's virtual network. All traffic to the service can be routed through the private endpoint. So no gateways, NAT devices, express route or VPN connection or public IP addresses are needed. Private link keep traffic on the Microsoft global network. All right, so that concludes the first lesson of network traffic management module. In the next video, we're going to learn about Azure Load Balancer. So we'll see you in the next one. Till then, take care.